All right, good evening, investors. Welcome to our class tonight. You have to let me know if this sounds too loud or quiet. Seems like it's a little loud today. Yeah? Let's see. Uh, all right, that should fix it a little. All right, you should be able to, yeah, you should be able to see the screen. Yep, all looks good there. If you hear some uh, storms in the background, it is, uh, we got quite a storm rolling through. So hopefully we don't have any power outages or anything. All right. Yeah, I think we're good. <clears throat> All right, cool. Uh, cool, so welcome uh, to our class tonight. We're going to get uh, started, dive right into this. We have uh, a lot of things to go over, actually. And uh, so we'll uh, try not to miss anything. Up on the screen, those of you that are new, you, sh you should see a uh, spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is a portfolio of our open positions, and anything that is highlighted... Uh, in this blue that you see right here, uh, that is now closed positions, and we'll review those uh, in just a minute. Those are closed positions that have occurred so far this week. We usually leave the uh, closed positions available for everybody to see for the entire week, and then we'll start the week with a new portfolio or a new uh, you know sheet without the blue lines in it. Any of the uh, lighter green highlighted cells that you see or just to draw your attention to changes that we've made to the portfolio. Uh, and then over here in our target category, we always have two targets for our positions that we take over here. And anytime you see something like this where it's highlighted or up here, it's just drawing your attention that we're getting close to it. Right? If it's got a strike through there, that means we've already hit it. And so like in this case, you can see we've already hit our first target. And we're just waiting on our second target should we get it. Okay. Oh, and one last thing right here. If you see it in green, that means we're locking in a profit of that amount. If it's in red, like down here, that means we're currently risking uh, this percentage, 8% in this case. Long and short is pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> uh, and then also we have the watch list off here to the right, which is just a repeat of these symbols, but in watch list form. All right, let's dive into it. <clears throat> We have, let's go through the top here and, and uh, start with, and we'll go top here, put the market in there. There we go. All right, so the market, um, I thought recovered pretty good today, considering where we were at uh, one point today. Uh, the morning started off pretty nasty, good strong sell-off. They broke some prior lows, had a lot of people selling in uh, as we broke those lows, and then we spent the rest of the day recovering from those lows. So um, I, I was, I like that. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I'm going to maintain the same sort of position that we have, which is, you know, let our long positions run into their targets now and, and not raise those targets anymore, uh, but try to raise our stops as much as possible. And then, uh, you know, very lightly do a few shorts as they uh, become available. Um, obviously, the market's in a perfectly straight good uptrend here, so not a reason to bet against that just yet. And all the ones that we are betting, uh, or all the ones that we are looking for uh, to play short or are in short, uh, we're doing so with good reason. So we know that other people will be shorting with us. So if we're right, they're right with us. And if we're wrong, they're wrong too. Um, so I'm impressed. Uh, like I said, on Tuesday, we, of course, either want to see us move up into those monthly highs, which are up here around you know, the people calling it like 1575, which is just this prior high. We're close, obviously. We have a little bit more to go, but um, I'd like to see either that we just run straight into it and then we can really get aggressive with raising our stops and trying more shorts. Or um, a good sign would be if we did exactly what we're doing here. If we kept this up for another week or so and then made a move higher, I think we have a greater chance of getting up and through that. <clears throat> so we adjust accordingly. As far as our positions are going, not too shabby. Let's go up here at the top and start and work our way down. We have GIS uh, broke out to new highs today. This is the, um, well, like we said when we first took it, this is one of the slower ones in our portfolio, will be one of the slower ones. 
Um, looks like it has these great big swing days, but really these aren't, it's not moving that much. Um, bottom line, we made it to new highs today. That's a good sign. Um, still working on that target, that second target here, this $45. And uh, we'll see. Nothing's extended, nothing's going too crazy. Uh, just nice slow uptrend. NWL is the same story. Um, we've been talking about this being a slow but profitable uptrend now for quite a while. Um, if you look at our sheet here, you go to NWL, we're almost to that target. I, I guess I could highlight this one as well. Wow, some nasty lightning. Um, I could highlight this one as well. Uh, 25 is our target. We're, we're getting there on NWL. Uh, let me look real quick. We're at 22 for a stop right now. I like that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so PKI, next one up on the list there. We've raised our stop on PKI as well to lock in some profit. $33 is where our stop is at. And uh, almost got hit the other day. It has since recovered. I'll be much more excited once we get back and above the green line that you see here on the chart. And uh, time will tell on that one. Uh, PKI, should we get to stay in it? Our, our new target's 36. We were close before, remember, on that last move. Uh, and I won't raise it anymore. So if we hit 36, that's great. If we fall from here and hit 33, that's great too. We'll make a little money on both sides. VMC, uh, it's been quietly, but uh, you know, slowly pulling back here. This is one that when you pull up our um, pull up our sheet here, we have yet to quite reduce the risk back to nothing. Um, we're at 52.87 right now. Um, the Kind of the cool part is it's holding above the 50-day moving average, which we'll talk about this in just a second. Um, but we do want to leave that stop where it's at, uh, and hopefully we get a couple uh, good days back up to prior highs before we start reducing the risk even more. <clears throat> we've already hit our first target on VMC, so we've got money in the bank. If we have, we take our stop on this um, last piece here, still guaranteed profit. So it looks a little funny, but if you think most of the position we made 58.75. We got about 8% on that. So if we stop out at uh, 52.87, obviously you can do the math. 55.41. Oops, I didn't mean to type it there. Oh man. Oh well, I went back too far. 55.41. So let me fix that real quick. Just put the formula there real quick. Ta-da! All right, we're back in business. Anyways, <laughs> sorry about that. So that's where we're at at the moment on VMC. Uh, VRX, real nice, keeps plugging up there towards highs closer and closer to our target. If you take a look at our sheet, our target was 68. It is very close. So if you're playing along looking for the same target, just a heads up that it, you know we're getting there. Uh, again, if you're brand new, so something like this, guaranteed to make a profit because we have no risk in the last part of our play. We took 66% out of the first part of our play, and you're probably noticing a little theme here after the past few plays. Our first target is always in the 8 to 12% category, right? And then our second target, you know, will be above that, but we always shoot for as much as we can get. And VRX in this case, uh, yes, it's close to that $68 not going to raise that uh, stop, or not going to raise this target anymore, sorry, and uh, we'll leave it at that. And we're not raising targets, remember, yeah, that's fair, uh, so we're not raising targets anymore because of the market location, right? If we were at highs, or, or I mean above the highs already, um, you know, we just keep playing like we've been playing since, uh, you know, way back uh, last year, November, October time. Moving on. Okay, FBHS looking good. Uh, decent day today. Nice slow uptrend here as well. I, I'll take a whole portfolio of these. Uh, we're going well. We, we're lucky enough to hit our first target. We're shooting for that second one, getting that risk reduced. Same game plan. Right? We're at $30 basically on our risk. Uh, maybe to see how it finishes tomorrow, but we might be able to raise the risk a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy on this one. Um, if you look at some of these stops here, I like to, when we start raising the risk, I like to keep it under the 50-day. 
if it's in a nice uptrend. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, that doesn't give us a lot of room to raise our stops. So I'll probably just keep it where it's at unless we have a big day tomorrow. Uh, Target. Target had an off day today, all in all, moving in the right direction. Um, not really much exciting to mention to you today. It's not near a Target at the moment. It's one of our newer plays, and so we'll just uh, keep rolling with it. Microchip. Microchip sitting up here near the highs, a couple back and forth days. We're not near a target um, just yet. However, um, they had earnings tonight, or you know, after the market closed, and the after hours action shows that it's getting close. We have a 3650 first target. Uh, anybody's guess. I don't. I don't think they've had uh, their conference call yet, so they could say something on the call, and the whole thing changes. But um, at the moment. It's showing that we're going to open around that 3615, 3620 area, and 3650 is our first target. So uh, make sure you have your order in just in case. And I highlighted it there too, just so I wouldn't forget to bring it up. Uh, that's a newer play as well on MCHP. And then the last two here are actually pretty much brand new. HP, uh, not Hewlett Packard. This is not that stock. Uh, HP is one of our shorts that we're trying. We've given it a generous stop to start, and I think for good reason. Right, 68.58 there. That's uh, yeah, normally that's just plenty of room, um, or maybe too much room. Uh, but remember, we're fighting a market uptrend here. So number one, we're not going to have a you know 50-50 portfolio longs to short, right? And number two, when we start slowly walking into some of these shorts, we're going to start pretty generous with that stop. 8% is pretty much the, the farthest I like to go. Sometimes we'll do 10% when the market's in a you know pretty decent pullback, um, but you know only 8% for now. Uh, so that, that one's just getting going. Pretty much nothing has happened. A little unnerving today to get it back up near the highs, but it's, it closed red with more volume than yesterday. So that's a good sign. should scare off some of the buyers at least for a few days. We'll see what happens. And then the last one that triggered today is Gill. And I want to focus on this one for a second before we cover some other stuff. Um, we, we were just saying how I like to have my stops under the 50-day moving average, right? I, so I didn't make that up. I, I know personally where I live here, uh, I happen to be fortunate enough to know a lot of people that work at uh, a company called Raymond James. I am it's a, um, they're like a Franklin Templeton or, a, you know, what are they, Edward Jones or whatever, you know, big, big financial company. And um, you'd be surprised how many of their traders do the same thing. But the difference is they're not just trading little old, you know, 500,000 shares or whatever you guys are trading and I'm trading. Um, they're trading major blocks <laughs> of money. You know, they're making huge bets on these things. You know, which is fine. They they got a lot of money, um, so they do the same thing. And Gill here is a great example of you know. Skip the fact that, that we're short. I mean, great. We we got a good entry. It it started off. You know, our position started with a nice profit, but that's not people shorting. You know, we we just happen to pick it off there. But this is these big big guys getting out. They've had a great run. They're all happy. It's it's perfect. You think they noticed that they were at price resistance here as well, and that we've had a long, long, long run up into highs, and the fact that it's breaking under the 50-day. I mean, they follow the same stuff, so don't think that you know you're just you know following along, making up stuff or, or whatever, and it's just a line on a chart. It's a line on a chart that people follow. So, just like we talk about the price resistance. My, the strategy doesn't revolve around price resistance. It revolves around the fact that people respond at price resistance. When we talk about these indicators down here, I think these things are annoying. But I know that people respond to these indicators. So I'm not following a strategy of, well, it crossed or it, it you know, went up and went down and went back up again, so that's a good sign. I'm following the fact that people look at this and will make a decision. And not just you know average people, the big, big institutions. They follow it. We talk about Fibonacci pullbacks, right? It's the same thing. I, I really don't know a lot about that. You know, I, I know the basics, but I know that when it hits those three major areas that you get a lot of response out of people. They know that have a lot more money than I do. So it's the same thing here. You can have 
entries, and maybe we'll have even more entries where we're getting in as it breaks the 50-day. Um, but you know, the majority of the time, these are people just taking their profits and walking away. You know, these, these guys think of this all all the way up here. All this, you know, all these people that dove in had this great run would be fools to not take some profit, and they're they're obviously not fools. Very smart people, so they're taking profit. So you know. One side of me wants to say, ah, yeah, that's awesome. Yay, we got a great short. Isn't that cool? You know, but that's really not what's going on here. It's it's really that just everybody else is getting out. We're just saying, oh, well, we missed this long move. Let's just go this way and grab a little money. So it's it's not a not a magical thing. Got a few emails today from you guys. So how'd you know to get in and right there? And I didn't. Right? It's not it's not me. It's the people taking profits that caused it to, to have such a good day. Okay, uh, now I want to address a couple of the plays that have exited, and I want to talk about one of our nasty, nasty moves today. Um, we got, uh, well, also Holex, too. I forgot about that one. So Holex trailed out, by the way. Uh, we talked about this on Tuesday, getting close to that 22. Our, our stop price here, it did hit. And then in this case, it's just one of those examples where we get almost 5% on the last piece. All right, so if you look at the, uh, is it, it's not even up there anymore. If you look at Holex, so we've moved our stop up to 22, right? And then it just got hit there today. So it looks to be a good exit, probably bounced for a few days, um, but I like that. I like the trail there. Uh, I'm happy with that. So a little bit of money on that overall. And then, um, you know, 2250. It's just a little bit more. So it's seven percent on the front, four percent, almost five percent on the back. So that's fine. And we're done with that play. So, so I won't mention that one anymore. So, that's that's how that works. When I'm out, you know, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Um, ADM the other day, I hit that target, and then so ADM had a great, great little pop there uh, to take us out, and we're done with that one, right? So that's good. I didn't think we were going to get that one, to be honest. That last 30 and a quarter. A lot of resistance overhead, but we got it. We got the volume and everything, so we're done with that. We walk away just for now. We might find something to do with that here pretty soon. We'll see what happens. Now on the nasty side, this ACAM um, not doing well, or whatever they you know, have to say. They didn't say it well, or you know, somebody's not happy. <laughs> so... Big gap down today on earnings. Now, we had raised our stop to where we had a 3% risk. Now, initially, we had an 8% risk on it, and you know we slowly walk it up little by little. And so what happens is you've got your order there to get out of 3904. Market opens, right? And if you're not around and it opens under your stop price, right, you're going to get filled on the open if it's a stop market order. If it's a stop limit order, you would have set a limit price and I don't know what you would have put there for a limit, um, but let's say you picked a limit of thirty-nine dollars. So your stop price is thirty oh four, thirty-nine oh four, and your limit price is thirty-nine. Well, then your order becomes a limit, and you're probably still not out of that play. So I always tell you to do stop market orders because we don't trade the type of stocks where you're really going to get ripped off on those, um, and you definitely want to be out when something like this happens. Yeah, I understand it's a bigger loss. But you, you just don't want to be hanging around. And even though it did pull back, or it, it came back a little bit today, you don't want to sit around now with a broken stock and say, well, I hope it comes all the way back up here. It, it's just time to move on. So remember, we got in at 40 and a quarter. So if you're thinking, all right, if it just gets back to 38, I'm out. Don't do that. You know, This is where you admit your loss and you, and you move on. And I want to point something out here, too, because if you're just playing one stock at a time, let's say you've got a, I'm, I won't even guess what how much money is in someone's account, but uh, let's say you have a, I'll, I'll go with a small account. You you have ten thousand dollars, and you think, oh, that's not a lot of money. I really got to you know just kind of bet all that money on one symbol. That's that's wrong. You you see us in here with multiple symbols. Your I, your goal should be to build a portfolio. And yeah, it might only be three or four stocks in the beginning. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to think, I'm building a portfolio because when stuff like this happens, I want to show you what, what the real effect is on your overall portfolio. Yeah, it sucks to lose more. I mean, we set out to lose initially 8%, and we're getting hit for almost twice that. But check it out. If, let's say, where can I type it? 
I'm gonna I'll put it um, unreal unrealize let's see if it'll fit there so I'll just let me just stretch this out here okay so let's say you did something like this um, we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we have thirteen positions here listed here okay so let's say this is um, the day before this happened what did ACAM close at yesterday we thought all was good 4158 we're like oh cool that's fine 4158 we had a 3% profit in it yesterday okay and so you go well how much am I up or down just give me a percentage how much am I is the portfolio up or down so what you can do is I don't know if you guys use spreadsheets too but I just do this for you guys but you can say alright let's take the entire portfolio and let's see what we have so you would say okay so we're up yesterday we're up six and a half percent you go oh, that's not bad okay good good there we go these are the open or you'd say these are the open positions at the time and if you had to cash in your entire portfolio in one shot you'd walk away with six and a half percent now we never do that but you get it now if you have if you're building a portfolio watch what happens you go over here and you say you say uh, okay what is what was the number let's say the opening price was 3380 alright so you go back over here and you say okay well shoot you know that that sucks that was a bad gap down you know these things happen and you go alright how much did that hurt that took one and a half percent off your portfolio so this looks all nasty and scary and it sucks that you had to give back a percent and a half but it's not the end of the world right now you look at it and you go well okay as long as that doesn't happen more than once or twice a year like a really nasty gap that's well beyond what I was thinking of losing not such a problem you know that happens to people left and right uh, case in point is a uh, friends of mine at uh, Raymond James had to play with this Herbalife thing. I don't know if you guys follow this, but Herbalife is back and forth fight between the rich guys. Uh, they had to sit through this. I mean, that's nasty to sit through that kind of a drop, 50%, you know? So here we are with our 16% or whatever it was, 15%, and we took a percent and a half off the overall portfolio. Now, how, when you that's unrealized. So that's if we had to cash the entire uh, portfolio in today. Now, as you're moving along, we have some that are performing better than others and some that may not work out and maybe some do a little bit better than we thought um, but you take a look at something and you go well what was the symbol microchip is the one so you go oh wow looks like that one had good earnings and for the most part you know gaps on earnings there it's not going to be a big deal but you look at this and you go well well that there is at 3610 right now so where's microchip you say, well, 36.10. So tomorrow we might see it at 36.10. There's a half a percent back. Right? So we're talking really small adjustments to your portfolio with big moves. So if you pick a play, let's say you pick GIS with us you know, back in September, you're probably really pissed off by now because, <laughs> number one, that's a slow stock. That, that's probably been a little boring for you. But if you pick one and then all of a sudden something happens, like you know, they find – crack cocaine in cereal tomorrow and GIS goes to zero or something you are gonna be so mad right but if you say okay well let me just take you know 10 percent I'm gonna put it on GIS and then I'm gonna take 10 percent of my account and put it on this one All right, Dustin you think this one's a good one I'm gonna put 10 percent on there for you and you just build a little portfolio right you think well that's not fair the most I can have is 10 positions and I want to be able to build something significant one day not true 10 percent is if you had the entire and you haven't hit any targets yet. Look how many we've already hit targets. So we really could go to town if the market were right here. We could have a whole bunch of positions. Not, I mean, then maybe you don't want that. that. That's fine. But, you know, if you just had a handful of positions, you're talking a small overall move in your portfolio. Because you notice on TV, nobody ever talks about or rarely ever talks about the one lucky trade that gapped up a million dollars or some you know twenty dollars all of a sudden or like LinkedIn gapping up after hours here too nobody ever talks about that on TV everybody wants to know what's your portfolio doing well the markets up a little bit what's yours you know markets down what's your portfolio up because nobody buys one 
stock, two stocks, three stocks, whatever. They buy a stock in each sector, or they, they're playing around with a certain sector, a couple stocks in one sector. So really think in terms of, I'm a big portfolio manager, and yeah, that's okay if you only have $5,000 in your account. I mean, maybe you, know, you probably should save a little more before you do this, but let's say you have 50000 in your account, and that's all you got. Manage it like it's $5 million, $50 million, $500 million. You know what I mean? You would never, ever, ever buy just one stock. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, you. So if you wanted to do that, the calculation is just. Yeah, at the, so you got it. Yeah. It's the sum of all of these divided by however many there is. So like. Yeah. You got it. It's just. It's just the simple. I mean, there's obviously a million ways we could break it down. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yep. Uh, so then it'll change. So now we're done with this one. Well, okay, I'm going to do this, but then I'm not going to save it because I, I want to save this for... No, it's Thursday. Okay, so let's get rid of it. Okay, so we're done here. Uh, we're done here. Okay, we're done here. Okay, and so when you th also think about this too, uh, AD ADM, you got 12% on that. So that one's out and done. So the this is kind of a misleading number to be fair that's what hasn't been put in the bank yet obviously anything can happen right but as we go and you start putting this chunk in the bank you want to keep a separate you probably your broker does it for you um, the spreadsheet that tells you the overall percentage gain or if you know what you started the year with you know go with that uh, so you're just slowly plugging away here with the realized gains now you come back to this and you got to say well now we only have 10 oops we just change uh, 6 to 15. That's good. So we're just going to change this to 10. And you say, okay, so now that's if we cashed in everything as a whole right now. All right? Obviously, it's not in our pocket yet, but let's see what happens. So it just save you a lot of stress. You know, it's, it's fun to get excited, you know, when something gaps up or if we were short, something gaps down. That That's fine, but you realize that it has to be a pretty, really, a pretty large gap to really have a significant effect in the overall portfolio, and um, yeah, it's not the exciting way to do it, but it's a, it's the slow and steady. Just take my eight percent here, take my ten percent there. Oh shoot, I took a loss there, and then occasionally when something gets a little out of hand, you know, you're gonna sleep just fine. You don't have to stress about it because every ninety days we're gonna go through this. So you want to be uh, you want to be sure. Okie dokie. And then, oh, by the way, if you can't, if you don't want to do it, and you don't want to be in during earnings. I know it sounds funny, but there's nothing wrong with getting out. And then the very next day, if it doesn't gap, or say it gaps up or down less than one or two percent, you can get right back in. There's nothing wrong with that because if you have a five percent, let's say ACAM, if we were to have got out and said, well, you know, we only have three percent, but we don't play earnings. Let me get out. And you've got three percent in the bank. You wake up the next day, and it and it gaps up one percent. You just hop right back in. So all you did was miss out on one percent. There's nothing wrong, you would say, with the overall pattern that you're going for. There's still room to the target that you were looking for. Nothing wrong with hopping back in. Obviously, your average cost changes, but you know it really hasn't because you've already locked in the prior profit. So that's that's a little harder to. Uh, Everybody always thinks, well, if it gaps up and then I get in and now my cost is higher and that sucks. Not really because you already put the money in the bank. But that's hard for a lot of people to to grasp. So just whatever you do, do it the same every time. If you're going to play through earnings, you play through earnings. And maybe you just happen to you know, look up how the earnings are going. If you do that, check this out. Check out some of the symbols. I, I do a lot of the homework for you, but a lot of these companies have had decent earnings growth, if not really, really good earnings growth, like FBHS. And um, so, you know, obviously if something changes, it's kind of a surprise, uh, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, now, I'll say that with the exception of Microchip. They don't have, like, stellar earnings growth, but apparently they did better than people were thinking. All right. Uh, so, yeah, again, so it's, you just, you pick a cell, 
right? And then you hit the sum button up here, right? That'll get the formula started for you. And then you just highlight the, here, do it again. You just click on wherever you want to start, hold the mouse down, select everything you want to select, right? And then you just count up however many cells you just selected. And we want to divide by that amount and hit the enter button. And then since it might do it automatically, since all these were percentages, it just did percentage as well. Although, oh, you know how to do that? Okay. No problem. All right. So that's all I have to share with you tonight. Be sure to uh, stay tuned for the letter on Monday for our uh, for reducing the risk and everything. Um, I thought I had other. Let's see. It might be down here. Oh, here's the other plays. Uh, mortgage MTGE continue to pull back. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a play anytime soon. I'll leave it there. I do like it, but I like you know I don't want to chase it. I mean I don't want to uh, buy it without it taking out the highs. See where we that price resistance there. So I'd be willing to play it, but I'm going to keep my same price there. Um, so there's there's nothing to do with it now. And then VCI, right? Still waiting on that one. That had a good day today. Same thing. Just get us to 29, and that'd be a good long. Okay. And that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to wrap it up. Have a great rest of your day if you're coming to us from around the world. Great rest of your evening if you're here in the States. <laughs> Some of you are going to work, I know. <laughs> That's so weird. Uh, yeah, you guys enjoy. Thanks for stopping by. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at Dustin, D-U-S-T-I-N, at TradingWings.com. You're very welcome. Adios.